Dear parents, brothers, and sisters, I am wounded, mortally, I think. The fight rages around me. I have done my duty. This is my consolation. I left not the line until nearly all had fallen and colors gone. I'm getting weak. My arms are free, but my chest all is numb. The enemy trotting over me, the numbness up to my heart. Goodbye to all. Alan Zacharias, Captain, Company E, 7th Michigan Volunteers. When Johnny comes marching home again, hurrah, hurrah, we'll give him a heart. In a bloody war, there was never such a bloody day. In fact, September the 17th, 1862, was the bloodiest day in all of American history. Hello, my friends. Today is our first history video about the American Civil War, and we talk about the Battle of Antietam. In September of 1862, Robert Lee was on a roll. All summer, he had outfought the Yankees, first on the banks of James River, and then in August, he had crushed the Army of the Potomac at the Battle of the Second Manassas. On September the 4th, 1862, Lee's army took the forts across the Potomac and launches an invasion of the North. They hoped to invade the North all the way to Pennsylvania. His objective was to resupply his army outside of the war-torn Virginia theater and to damage northern morale in anticipation of the November elections. Southern troops on northern soil might also cause panic in the stock market. It would also gain the attention of the rest of the world and might even result in recognition of the Confederates by the French and the Brits. And the most important thing for usual Confederate soldiers, they knew that their side was winning at this moment and one more win could end it all. Never have the prospects or the stakes been so high. Before we talk about the Union forces, I would like to share with you some useful information. In preparation for this video, I needed to watch different documentaries on different platforms. And unfortunately, it turned out that not all resources can be viewed while living in another country. But my thirst for knowledge cannot be stopped. There is a tool that will help remove all restrictions. Have you ever tried to check Netflix in Europe while living in the USA? Or maybe you want to watch some documentaries available only for the USA while living in Europe. No more borders or virtual obstacles with the NordVPN service. Go to nordvpn.com slash LCM and enjoy a huge discount of the two-year plan with four additional months for free. And this is not only about fun. If you live in a country with no freedom and you are not allowed to use the internet as you wish, once again, NordVPN is your answer. It's extremely fast, next generation encryption, double VPN so it encrypts traffic twice, and there's block malware and more with threat protection. So nordvpn.com slash LCM and you open the whole world for yourself and you get full security of your personal data and internet activity too. Don't forget about your discount and four additional months for free. Go and check the link in the description box. Final brick in the wall? It's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. And we are back to our story. So what about the Northern soldiers? After several losses in a row, the morale was at a very low level. However, at this moment, President Abraham Lincoln appointed Major General George B. McClellan to command the Union forces against Lee's invasion. He wasn't a very good general, but soldiers liked him a lot and were happy to get this news. So McClellan was really lucky. Confederate General Lee adopted the risky strategy of dividing his army to seize the Federal garrison and arsenal at Harper's Ferry, 
simultaneously to his march northwards. Lee made a plan of the invasion. Secret Order 191 was issued with an extra copy, and that copy was lost. Corporal Barton W. Mitchell and First Sergeant John M. Bloss of the 27th Volunteer Infantry discovered a mislaid copy of Lee's detailed battle plans, Special Order 191, wrapped around two cigars. What? I'm Corporal Mitchell. Hey, old oh man, what are you talking about? Professor, actually. Corporal, uh, just check that piece of paper. <clears throat> so, as I told you before, Union forces were lucky to know every step the Confederates were going to make. Great, huh? Two cigars. And what is it? It's a copy of a secret Confederate plan. Just give it to your commanding officer already. Against 55,000 of Lee's soldiers, divided into two armies, McClellan moved more than 80,000 soldiers. Lee was surprised by the quick response to his invasion. He wanted to fight Union soldiers somewhere near Baltimore, and now Confederates were caught at a small town of Sharpsburg, between the Potomac and Antietam Creek. And here, the Union commander made his first big mistake. George McClellan knew that Lee's army was divided, but still was sure that the Confederates had a huge army. He spent two days scouting positions of his enemy. That time allowed Lee to reunite his army. Oh, what is this house? Church built by a pacifist sect of German Baptists. The Dunkers. Oh, nice. Finally, after two days of waiting, the Yankees started their attack. Regiment, prepare for battle. Attack! Sir, what do we need to attack? I don't see anything except a cornfield. Where's our enemy? Where should we go? No idea. We have an order to move straight ahead, advance towards that high ground, and attack. You see that White House? I think that's our goal. So move up. Coming, boys. Wait till they get close before you shoot.
excuse me, uh, would you please stop shooting for a couple of minutes? I can't hear anything. Thank you. The action on the north of the battlefield is a series of moves and contra-attacks, and at the end, the Union were the winners. They broke the Confederates' lines and approached their goal, the Ducker Church. So all of the left flank of Lee's army was crushed, and the victory was almost in McClellan hands. Almost. Almost. During the Civil War, one of the most vital maneuvers was to get at the opponent's flank. The goal is to place a large formation of riflemen in line, firing at the end of the enemy's line. Sometimes this maneuver is accomplished by design, and sometimes it occurs by accident. Near the Dunker Church, last chance for the South Army, a Confederate reinforcement division accidentally ran into the flank of the Union formation. All Union forces which at that moment were totally winning this battle were swept away in minutes. The Yankees ran away as fast as they possibly could. Panic! They were running for their lives! On this left flank, near the Dunker Church in the cornfield, Union soldiers heavily outnumbered the South Army. Two factors played a bad joke on them. First of all, within just two hours of the fight, all commanding officers were killed or wounded, and the soldiers left without direct orders. And the second thing, a flank counterattack near the church. The fighting began at 5.30 in the morning. By 9 o'clock, Confederates withstood several attacks of three full Union Corps and had beaten all of them back. More than 12,000 soldiers from both sides were killed or wounded. One American every single second. However, it was only the first battle on the left and north flank of the battlefield. Everything was over here. But some of the worst fighting is only yet to come in the middle and on the right and south flank. And we stop our story here. It's nine o'clock in the morning. The left flank battle is over. The bloodiest day in American history is going to continue. So we'll be back soon with the second part of the Battle of Antietam. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you soon. Farewell.